Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. That makes sense. Okay. Um, are we ready? Captions are working. Uh, we've already called the meeting to order. And I want to make sure that we did have quorum. And we do. Okay. Um, let the record show that we do have quorum. Also, I wanted to let the record show that Colin Waltz and Carrie Humphreys both are excused, have excused absence. Okay. Okay, we're going to start with the communication rules. Um, so to remind everyone again, please try to identify yourself when speaking. Uh, mention your name. And um, please wait until you're recognized before you speak. So that way we don't have overlap in conversation. That helps with the captioning and that also helps with the interpreting. Um, Ready to switch? Um, we do have somebody that will be in charge of spotlighting. So there will be a lot of things happening. Uh, <coughs> so let's just all take a moment to pause for that. We're going to switch interpreters. Okay. So uh, next uh, possible visitor that's going to be in on our Zoom meeting is YouTube. YouTube Live. And uh, there's no way for them to identify themselves on the Zoom grid. So if you want to make a comment, just please email, email information, info at VDD, excuse me, VDDHH.gov. Let me do that again and make it clear. If the, anybody from the public has a comment, something you want to share during the public comment time, please send us an email at info short for information, info at vddhh.gov, okay? During our comment time, we will recognize uh, public for their comments, okay? What uh, we're gonna do is go around the Zoom room. Uh, please introduce yourself and we'll start with um, how do we want to organize this? I guess I'll call your name and you unmute or bring up your video first. Let's see. Tim, you're next. Introduce yourself, please. Good morning. I'm Tim Patterson. I serve on the board as a parent of a deaf or hard of hearing child. Great, thank you, Susie. And give us a little time to switch windows. Here I am. Hi, I'm Susie Wilbur. I'm a member of the board as a deaf community member. Tracy said, thank you, Susie, Joy. Oh, excuse me, Roy. <laughs> excuse me, interpreter error, Roy. Hello, my name is Roy Martin, and I'm a member of the board, and I'm a parent of a child that is hard of hearing. I'm also a cochlear implant user, and I'm happy to be here today. Thank you, Roy. Next, Dr. Lewis. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dr. Chantel Lewis, and I am an audiologist in the Richmond area, and I serve on the board as a professional member. And Tracy said, next, Karen. 
Hi, my name is Karen. I was uh, switching windows here. My last name, I'm a new member on the board and I'm um, hard of hearing. I am representing hard of hearing on the board. I am also a cochlear implant user as well. Wonderful, thank you. My name is Tracy Branch. I'm chairperson for the advisory board uh, for the deaf uh, community. I'm a deaf community member of the board. So now we'd like to introduce VDDHH staff. We'll start with the director. Jason, here. I'm here as well. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eric Raff, and uh, I want to quickly mention Jason, another board member we need to recognize. I don't see his picture here. Are you with us? Oh, yeah, there you are. I'm here, I'm here Jason. I represent uh, Heart of Hearing. I have my VD, D, VDHH uh, handy mask with me today, so I was glad to be with you guys. Tracy said, thank you for joining us, Jason. Eric? Oh, um, uh, oh okay. I'm so happy to see everyone in the meeting. And we'll turn it over to the staff to please introduce themselves. Tracy, uh, Rhonda Jeter, please introduce yourself. Here I am. Hello, good morning. My name is Rhonda Jeter and I am the business manager here at VDDHH. Next. This is, uh, oh, I can't see all of the names of who's here. If I don't have if you don't have your video on i can't see you can you turn on your video staff there's karen hi i'm karen brim i am a community service program manager tracy said thank you elaine good morning introduce yourself please Elaine, you need to take yourself off of mute. There we go. I forget that every time. I'm Elaine Zeal. Good morning, everybody. Really good to see you um, with VDDHH. Um, I administer the VQAS program. I've been with VDDHH for 25 years. So great to see everybody. 25. 25. Thank you. All righty, let's see next. Virginia. Hi everybody, good morning. I'm Virginia. I am the administrative assistant with VDDHH, and it's good to see you guys. Next, Brittany. Good morning, everyone. My name is Brittany Howard. I am the tech technology assistance um, program specialist coordinator. I'm filling in for the tap manager today.
Paul. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Paul Stussy, uh, Community Services uh, Specialist for VDDHH. And I'm currently uh, making sure that YouTube Live stays connected. And uh, I hope you all have a wonderful meeting today. Thank you, Paul. Have I missed anyone? Okay. Of course, we have uh, Rhonda with us captioning and we have interpreters, Bernadette and who's the other one? Amanda. Oh, sorry. The other interpreter is Amanda. Is Clayton with us? Is he joining us? Uh, yes. I'm talking about the other interpreter. Uh, I, I don't have her name here. Oh, Clayton, I didn't realize you were with us. Hi, good morning. I haven't morning. seen you in so long. How are you? Um, I'm doing well. Thank you. Um, I'm working with Eric on the relay request for proposal. Uh, while the relay manager position, of course, is still vacant. Uh, we have our contracts are ending this spring, this summer. Uh, so I'll be working on the RFP and until the new relay manager gets on board. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Okay, I think that completes all of our introductions. Okay, uh, let's see. First order of business is to review um, the draft agenda. Uh, many of you, well, all of you have received the agenda uh, with other attachments, other documents. Uh, I hope you've re reviewed them in your email. If uh, you have any changes, corrections, uh, please let me know. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Now. Remember to raise your hand so that we can document you on the captioning and with the interpreters. Does anyone want to make a motion to approve the agenda? Okay, Roy. Roy made the motion to approve the agenda and Dr. Lewis seconds, okay? The second order of business is the minutes from our last meeting. Uh, please review them and let us know if there's any corrections, changes that need to be made. If none, may I see a motion from the board to accept the last meeting minutes? Hi, Tracy, I wanted to, um, this is Dr. Lewis. And I wanted to make a comment about the minutes. Um, since we use CART, for our meetings. I wanted to know if we can use the CART transcript for our minutes. Um, the, I reviewed the minutes and I noticed some of what I said at the last meeting was not in the minutes. So in order to prevent that, um, is it possible just to submit the CART transcript for our minutes? And the second thing I would like to bring up um, is also can the link or some reference to the link for the YouTube live sessions be included in the minutes? Um, for example, when we just started the, the meeting, there was a, you know, a comment made that you know, YouTube live was available and people can you know, send an email to um, if they have questions. But since we are recording our meetings, is there any way we can uh, you know, just make sure that's incorporated in our minutes. 
I didn't see where that was incorporated with the last one. And I think it's important to make sure everything we talk about is included in our minutes, not just summaries. And I know I said a lot last time, so that's, <laughs> I'm thinking, why isn't that in the minutes this time? Um, so yeah, and um, I guess that's something we would have to think about and include that starting with the last minute, if we can just use the current transcript, which, you know, gets all, it'll report everything everyone said in a minute, the minutes, not just a, a summary and we missed out on what people have to say, especially with board reports. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lewis. Thank you for your comment. Uh, we'll let Eric or RJ uh, comment on that, please, because there's a system that they're using for the CART information for the minutes, but I don't really know how that works. <clears throat> RJ, do you want to talk about that, Rhonda? Okay. First of all, the minutes are a summary of the meeting, a summary. They're not supposed to be verbatim. It's not supposed to be so wordy. Uh, so I was asked to make it, uh, the meeting kind of pointed and concise. So I try to summarize, um, make sure that everything is included, but often uh, the CART transcript itself may be missing information as well. I'm not saying it's the captioner's fault. It's just the nature of captioning. So sometimes information is not very clear uh, on the captions. And I'm not, again, I'm not blaming the captioner. It's just the nature of captioning. It doesn't capture everything. So I am doing my best to capture the important points. And I heard in the past, if minutes were too long, if they went on and on, people tended not to read them, basically. And um, we can add information about the link to YouTube Live. Yes, yeah, we can easily do that. <laughs> Also, um, any corrections, any editing to the minutes can be done at any time. So Dr. Lewis, if you would like to add some more information uh, as to your comments or, or responses, please let me know. I'd be happy to, to enter that next time. There's not always a time uh, to allow for corrections, but. Hi, this is Dr. Lewis. Um, I know in the past when I've made um, comments and I've been on the board for seven years, um, it's been fine. I just noticed with, you know, this set of minutes and when I gave my board report, a lot of the information wasn't in there. And I feel like, especially since this is an advisory board, when we give reports, it's important information and the minutes are public. So I would appreciate the meeting, our past meeting in November, what I, I said in the meeting to be a part of the minutes. So I don't know how we have to do that. We can definitely talk, but I can't approve minutes when I know the bulk of what I said was not in there. And I do read the minutes, even if they're really long, I just feel that, that it's important. It's a, it's a public document when it's published um, it's important for everyone to know what we talked about and not just a one sentence summary or, you know, a couple of sentences. It, what, what was in the minutes really didn't capture what I, what I said. So we can talk, um, or set up a meeting, but I can't vote on the minutes today. And I really would like for us to, as a board, to decide if we would like to include the CART transcript that would have all of the information from there. But we can talk um, later for that, but I, I won't approve the, the minutes this time. Thank you.
Roy has a comment, um, but first I'd like to say with Dr. Lewis, sorry. Um, today, block the mute. Um, today um, on the agenda, we will be discussing uh, the, the previous minutes. So if there's something that you would like to add um, today, you can. And then um, after that addition, um, you can vote if you feel um, it is not required to wait um, until the meeting's ended um, to add anything. You can add that while we're active in the meeting. Um, there is no time limit. So if you feel that uh, there is a bulk of the information missing, um, so you can make that comment. So to kind of hold on to that thought, I would like to um, let Roy have the opportunity to share his comment. Uh, thank you. This is Roy. Um, uh, the beauty of Zoom and this technology is with the closed caption feature at the bottom, you can highlight that and you have a view your transcript uh, on any meeting that is allowed by the host. So in addition to the car transcript, we can also get a transcript just straight from the Zoom meeting that uh, could easily be visualized and posted. Um, of course, the minutes um, are supposed to be an abridged version so that we can track through and then when public goes through those agenda meeting minutes, then they can reference the actual uh, recorded transcript, which would be either car or Zoom. That's typically what we see. So the minutes should reflect the points of business. And then, uh, but as long as we have access for the public to, to view either car transcript or even the Zoom transcript, uh, each and every one of us at the end of the meeting can actually click that view transcript and have a copy of that. So that's just a suggestion. Um, you know, the, the minutes being more of a kind of table of contents of our discussion. And then you have the details in two formats with the car transcript and the closed caption. Just uh, didn't know if everybody was aware of that technology, but it's, uh, it's been very useful. And it is at the bottom of your screen where the CC is, you highlight it and it gives you that option. Okay. For the interpreter, um, yes, that's the sign for Zoom. Zoom. Oh, what is she talking about? Chicago? Okay, sorry. Um, all right, so uh, Dr. Lewis, is there anything else you would like to add as far as adjustments to the minutes? Um, or any information you'd like to add what has been previously reported? Um. Well, I mean, it's a little bit too much to um, kind of go through right now. It would take up a lot of time. However, I like um, Roy's uh, suggestion. So maybe if we can add something to the minutes um, that says, you know, the, to or have the cart transcript available and the Zoom transcript available. Um, so if people want to um, read through everything. And I understand it's a summary, but I still feel like it could have been uh, summarized a little bit better and in more detail. But if we have a, a way of just letting people know, we do have other options um, where people, if they want to kind of read through and get more information than CART and then the um, Zoom transcripts are available. And I'll just leave it at that. And that was just a, a suggestion. I do appreciate your feedback and having this discussion. Um, we've always used CART transcripts to help kind of uh, fill So please, when minutes are sent out, um, you can uh, reply back um, any adjustments that you have. So for today, maybe you could abstain your, your vote for the approval of minutes. Um, and Dr. Mm -hmm. give you a chance to um, add comments to either myself or Melissa. Mm -hmm. uh, once we do approve the minutes, it does become part of the I don't think that we can go ahead and add that once mm -hmm. the minutes. 
There's some of the cards that does the typos and whatnot. So we have the unedited version of the card transcript. So for anybody who wants a copy of the transcript, it's public record and it um, it is um, terrible once somebody asks for it. Um, so it is available to me. I did want to share that. Tracy speaking. Okay, so we will table that until the next meeting. Um, and then we will uh, review the additions um, and approve that. Next on the agenda and the order of business is to hear report from VDDHH staff, starting with the director, Eric Raff. All right, waiting for the spotlight. Well, good morning, everyone, again. Uh, we're one month into the new year, but I'll go ahead and still say Happy New Year. I hope that everybody has been able to stay safe and healthy Right now, um, you know, we're going through the trials of the vaccine all over the country and that's starting to spread out. Uh, VDDHH um, currently are still following the stay at home order. I know we're all excited to get back to the office. Hopefully by fall, we will be back in the office um, ready to go. But right now we are still working from home. I myself am still at home. Uh, but I do continue to show up in the office periodically, um, you know, to check on things. And related to the YouTube Live, uh, we have had some challenge, challenges back in November, um, was our first time using the YouTube Live, and there were some problems with the connection uh, some people in the audience uh, were trying to watch. They were experiencing a lot of frustration with the captions. There was a lot of frustration with the spotlighting. Um, and there were some several other um, issues that we had, uh, you know, struggles with seeing the interpreter. So we did experience a few challenges with the YouTube Live. We're hoping that this meeting, um, we have learned a few um, tips and tricks um, so that the meeting does run more smoothly. Um, and hopefully by the next meeting, um, we can do a webinar, webinar style. Um, I think that would be easily accessible, a little bit more accessible than it, than it is with YouTube. Um, one challenge that we have uh, heard, it is hard to see the interpreter um, and there has been a lot of challenges there. So we are still experimenting with the platform so that we can um, have access to the public to easily view the meetings. Uh, when we go back to in-person meetings, we will still continue to use Zoom uh, for folks all over the across the Commonwealth so that they do have access. I think this is going to be a really great function and feature to our meetings. From here on out, we will be recording all of our meetings and it will be uploaded to YouTube. Um, so possibly if those um, individuals who had missed, um, you can go back and watch it on YouTube and hopefully the interpreter will be accessible and clear. Um, 
a recent frustration with legislation uh, this year. Well, we've had a longstanding special session. Um, we had a meeting this past January, uh, 30 days, uh, which is typically, um, you know, 30 days in odd years, 60 and even. This being an odd year uh, with a special session, it should finish up next Thursday. So I have been looking at the different bills that are coming across. Right now, there are no bills that directly impact deaf or hard of hearing individuals. So, um, also, there have also been a limited number of bills that have been um, proposed. I think that um, they, they are in um, discussion, uh, but they have had a lot of change over from last year. Some of the bills um, are related to disabilities in general uh, in regards to special education. Uh, one of the bills is um, regards to handicap parking. Um, and handicap, handicap spots. So it's just disabilities in general, um, nothing particularly geared at deaf and hard of hearing individuals. Um, I do monitor what's going across, but as far as um, I understand, all the bills have been closed and there's none under consideration. Um, the bills have already had their motions I did want to share in regards to the budget um, that with five bills introduced, VDDHH asked for a small increase um, in two areas of our budget. So we have the federal, um, we did ask for a small increase because the federal funds had allowed us to spend the federal funds through the State Department of Education, where we provide um, the evaluation of interpreters. Um, we had a small rate through the Department of Education and those authorize us to, we were authorized to spend that and, and apply those funds for the Virginia Board of People with Disabilities. There, they had a grant set up for a pilot SSP uh, provider program. And through that grant, uh, we're setting up the project to use federal funding. Um, and we realized that we did not have enough um, to be, you know, in, included with that SSP grant, we did ask for an increase that would allow both the VQIS educational assessment and the SSP pilot project. Uh, so that was proposed for our budget. Also, we did ask for special funds as well as asking for a small increase Due to last spring with the relay uh, service increase, you know, and demand with COVID response. So we did ask for some special fundings to appropriate for that spend expenditure since it has increased. Uh, we have been over budget. Um, so we did ask for an adjustment. So we did ask for an increase to accommodate that overspending um, for the relay services. Right now, uh, the budget is um, in with the legislation. So I am continuing to monitor, monitor it um, and hopefully we'll be receiving that approval soon. Are there any questions before I go on? Okay, seeing none. In regards to human resources and VDDHH, um, you're probably familiar now that Leslie Hutchinson has since retired. 
And we all miss her already. At the same time, we are very thankful for Pam to continue working on with coordinating the interpreting services um, for the different state departments. Okay, we're gonna do a switch up for the interpreters. Uh, thankful to Pam Dorman uh, and we thank Leslie for all her hard work in her position with BVDHH. Uh, we have had two interviews, two rounds of interviews for Leslie's position, interpreter services manager position. And um, we're hoping to make an announcement uh, sometime later this month, once we choose uh, the new person <clears throat> to take over the interpreter program and services program. Also, I want to thank Clay. He's been a huge help as the relay manager. Oh, there's Pam. Hi, Pam. This is Pam Dorman. Would you like to introduce yourself, Pam? Can you spotlight Pam, please? Good morning, everybody. I apologize for being late. I, I had to put out some ISP fires this morning. I am Pam Dorman. Um, I have been working for the agency um, with ISP for over 20 something years. So I'm very busy always um, uh, providing uh, accommodations for the state agencies and the courts. Nice to meet all of you. Thank you, Pam. Thank you for joining us. Eric's saying, great. Okay. Oh, where'd I go? Also, I want to thank Clay for all his help uh, while we uh, had the relay manager position available. We are still recruiting for a relay manager. And we had two uh, deaf and hard of hearing regional specialist positions as well. We're planning to have um, one of the vacant positions set up in Richmond and the other one in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Uh, so that's a project, a work in progress. And I hope we can fill those three positions this spring. I wanna talk a little bit about elections and can we hold off on our agenda, planned agenda a little bit? I wanna talk about the relay. I did mention that the relay calls have really increased since last spring because of the pandemic. Now it's starting to uh, level off, plateau a bit. However, we continue to see quite an increase in the number of um, real-time captioning. That is really on a big increase for real-time captioning. And uh, we look over uh, real-time captioning, our CC, real-time conference, we need to improve that service. For example, like with frequently asked questions, how can we use um, real-time conference captioning for that? Because there's a lot of contacts coming in from different places and that's it, it's a very popular service. Also, Clay mentioned um, before, and I'll mention again that we have two contracts with relay providers. Hamilton is one that specializes in CapTel services, uh, CTS we call that, and their uh, contract will expire in April. So we're working on that with Hamilton and also Virginia Information Technology Agency, VITA. VITA is the state agency responsible for the RFP. So Clayton and I are giving them help, of course, writing the RFP. And while uh, writing the RFP, the CTS uh, contract, we've decided to extend it 
by a month uh, for the CTS uh, contract will be extended. So we're, um, also it's been brought to our attention that the Virginia Relay will be 30 years old this March. 30 years, I was like, wow, is that possible? But yeah, we've had the Virginia Relay for 30 years now. And we are trying to figure out how we can, you know, have a celebration of sorts. I know with COVID, we can't all get together. We have to stay uh, apart. So we thought about um, posting on websites and then have a celebration later. We've not decided yet, but uh, we continue to work with Ultratech and contract with Hamilton. Um, we have a staff member, Eric El Elvilar. He does a lot of our outreach uh, promotions uh, for our Virginia Relay. And he's uh, been working hard, participating in uh, different um, conferences, virtual conferences and um, virtual meetings. Also, uh, Eric provides training to businesses when they sign up to become a Virginia Relay partner. Also, Eric works with us uh, Eric works with us, I missed. Uh, let me clarify, excuse interpreter, uh, Eric. We work with uh, different Hamilton uh, marketing projects. For example, uh, we had a big promotion through transit. And um, now we're working on uh, email, you know, remote area medical RAM, where uh, people who are of low income can get their um, medical care, eye exams, dental care, health care. We also have some audiologists. Uh, and uh, go to help with RAM. VDDHH tends to have a booth to at that event to promote. Um, but because of COVID, uh, RAM is not happening at this time. It's on hold. But uh, we have some subscribers to email, which we contact about truly about 10,000 subscribers in Virginia through uh, the RAM mailing list and we have a crazy advertisement radio radio <laughs> thank you <clears throat> and that's uh that's it for my report any questions okay thank you tracy back to you okay thank you Thank you, Eric. Uh, next, we're going to hear from Brittany. She has a report on the TAP program. Brittany? Brittany, can we spotlight Brittany, please? Do you want to uh, follow the agenda? And, or it doesn't really matter. Would you like to go next? Brittany, are you ready? I'm, I'm ready if you guys are ready for me. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Brittany Howard. I'm the Technology Assistance Program Specialist here. Um, I'm really excited to be with you all to talk to you about some of the major accomplishments that have been going on in TAP. Um, before I get started, does anybody have any questions about the reports that you received regarding TAP within the packet of information that was sent out? <clears throat> no? Okay, great. Well, um, one of my favorite things about working with TAP is that we're constantly learning because we constantly need to research about equipment that's new equipment that's being released 
and um, is updated the latest and greatest. While researching about those devices, sometimes we find that our current devices have become discontinued. Um, within our recent research, we've discovered three of our devices have re um, recently announced that they are discontinued. Our current doorbell, the strobe trine, is discontinued. One of our amplified phones called the PowerTel 760 is discontinued. And our HD40S, which is a phone that will amplify outgoing speech, has been discontinued. So right now we're working on finding a replacement that will be suit suitable to our consumers for those three devices. We're currently testing a new doorbell. We sent them out last Friday to 10 people who are on our evaluators list. After we get evaluations from our doorbell, we are going to send out a cell phone amplifier from Serene. Um, Board members, if any of you are interested in helping us evaluate any equipment, please, please, please email Christine and let her know. Um, we'll be happy to put you on our list and get these. Susie said, I'm, I'm willing. Who, who did? Karen did? Susie, oh, Susie Wilbur. Yes, Susie, email Christine. Let's get you on that list. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So that is an option. <laughs> okay. All right. So we are doing that right now. Um, we've also just implemented a new consumer survey. Um, before the survey ha had a bunch of questions and we had a rating scale of one through five, which didn't really seem to get a lot of great responses. Our new survey has just a few questions where we focus on um, everyone's satisfaction with the equipment and services they received. Um, and we also have an opportunity for them to provide any additional feedback. And the responses have been really great. Um, our, our rating scale now has become a poor to excellent instead of one through five rating scale, which is seems to be a little better. And if you haven't had an opportunity to review a copy of the results from the consumer survey, I really encourage you guys to take a look at that because I included um, some of the comments that were provided and it's, we're doing a good job with TAP. Our specialists are doing a great job. So I felt that was important for everyone to see. Um, let's see. We are also working with Atos Medical, um, which is a company that makes electronic larynxes. We're getting ready to do another um, workshop with them where we will discuss TAP and the equipment that's available as well as other services within the agency. And then Atos is actually providing a course that will give speech language pathologist CEUs towards their license. Um, and we've done this before. In the past when we've done this, it's really increased our numbers for electronic larynxes for people who have their voice box removed. Just to give you guys an idea of how it's been increased. Um, back in 2018, TAP distributed six electronic larynxes. In 2019, we increased to 26. And then in 2020, during the pandemic, we um, distributed 24. And then as of 2021, January, we've already distributed five electronic larynxes. So that workshop has been a success with getting information about TAP and Relay out to the community. Um, we've we're also getting ready to start training our new specialist in the Region 3 area. More details will probably come regarding that later. Um, it's still very new for us. And then um, last but not least, we have just entered our second year in our new TAP and community service contract, which is going well. Of course, with the current health pandemic, there have been some things that we need to overcome and adjust. 
Um, as a response, we have decreased the required amount of consumers that each specialist needs to serve. And um, most of our offices have become by appointment only. So walk-ins just aren't really being taken right now so that we have planned to I'm sorry, so that we have time to plan for safety precautions, sanitizing, and all of that. Um, and we are still keeping in touch with our contractors by hosting Zoom meetings um, to provide new information or to discuss anything that's going on with them and their regions. Um, does anybody have any questions about anything I just mentioned? Okay. Well, thank you so much for allowing me to give you guys a report today. Have a great day. Oops, my thank you, Brittany. Wonderful report. Sounds great. Okay, so now next, uh, Elaine Zeal. Elaine? Hi. Good morning again, everyone. So VQAS, um, it is going really, really well. Um, as some of you may know, I had originally planned to retire at the same time that Leslie did. Then COVID hit and we wound up suspending the testing portion of the VQAS program, and you all probably all know this, for it was probably at least seven months. Well, the better part of my conscience told me that with Leslie leaving, I did not want to leave at the same time and have potentially two new people, the, the program manager and a VQAS coordinator walk into um, I don't want to say chaos because it wasn't chaotic, but it was a lot to catch up with that seven month suspension of testing. I'm delighted to say that we have done that. We actually caught up with a seven month suspension in four to five months. Um, in addition to that, uh, uh, we uh, routinely test students, interpreter training program students from J. Sergeant Reynolds training programs and from Liberty University training programs. That also happened during the pandemic. And uh, I had, I think, I think 28 students all together um, this year that needed to be tested, that needed to have their results turned around very, very quickly um, in order to um, get their semester grades and to qualify for um, uh, different, different things. Um, I didn't want someone new to walk in with that um, so, again, we tested all the students, all the students got their grades in an appropriate time frame, um, and I'm in the process now of, of sending them, or I think most of the, the diagnostic reports um, have been sent to them, and the training programs have actually um, made VQAS part of their curriculum, which I think is very cool. I think it's awesome. So having said all of that, we're, we're caught up. Um, it's an ongoing process, but we're caught up. I have talked twice to Boys Town about reestablishing the EIPA uh, testing portion, which we will do. Um, I, I need to find out from them. They're very specific with their testing schedule. So it'll either be this month or March that we start administering EIPA testing again. One more thing that I didn't want to just leave out there uh, for someone new to try to figure out how to handle. Um, Boys Town is 
very, very strict with the proctoring of their assessments. And I think at this point right now, I'm the only person that's gone through the, the training and done the paperwork and all of that kind of stuff to actually administer EIPA written and performance exams. Um, if, if, I, if I wasn't here, there, I, you know, someone would have to go through that process very quickly to, to, um, to do the EIPA. So um, QAS is, I feel like, in, in, in really good shape. My plan at this point is to be here at least through June. Um, I, you know, what I'm kind of open for that, but, but we'll see. Um, whatever, you know, I want to do what I can to make sure that VDDHH gets through everything um, and, and a new person is comfortable coming in where everything is in good shape and, and as it should be. So that's my goal. Anyway, um, any if anyone has any questions, let me know. Um, I'm happy, I'm still happy to be here. I'm working most of my time from home as a matter of fact, I had to come into the office actually to do this Zoom meeting because uh, I am having a, a small spare bedroom transformed into a little home office for myself. And the noise was unbelievable, having floors refinished and sanded and all of that kind of stuff. So I'll have a lovely new little home office to work from for however long I'm here. All right, everybody, great to see you. Thank you so much. That's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Keep up the good work. Okay, so next on the agenda, we have Karen. Karen? Good morning, everyone. I'm Karen Brim, Community Services Program Manager. Um, I'll give you a uh, update on what we've been doing since the last board meeting. Um, like Brittany from the TAP program mentioned, uh, we are continuing to telework, um, both our BDGHH main office, myself and the specialist, um, Paul Stucy, have been mostly working from home, going into the office only when required, um, something that we can't get done at home. Um, and uh, the field specialists, the DHH field specialists have all been um, conducting community services program related activities, um, you know, as best they can um, at the discretion of their contract holders, um, being able to see uh, uh, which events they can go to virtually. Most of them have not gone to face-to-face uh, -face events uh, because most organizations have uh, transitioned to having online events. Um, and so our work looks a lot different right now um, compared to pre-COVID, I think everyone feels that their world has changed significantly since um, the pandemic has hit us. And uh, so getting used to that and figuring out uh, different ways to do business uh, has really been a learning curve for everyone. Um, we have, uh, I have continued to uh, be involved with the statewide interagency team activities um, along with Director Raff. Um, and right now that is mainly focused on um, continuing to do analysis for feedback from town hall uh, activities and comments that we've held um, in order to be able to work toward a white paper um, that uh, project has been uh, long uh, because there's so much data there to go through and uh, we're all working together to try and um, put together that white paper and we're, we're hoping to be moving toward the finish line with that. Um, uh, I and Paul have also um, contributed to the regional interagency team meetings. Um, I've been uh, uh, active with the Northern Virginia group and Paul has sat in on the Central Virginia groups and just kind of touching base with, um, with the various uh, professionals that are working in those areas to make sure that we have an idea of what things are looking like for them. Uh, one overarching factor that everyone seems to be mentioning is uh, mental health and isolation. And so I uh, just want to take this moment to make a plug for making sure that everyone 
uh, the board, anyone watching this, um, make sure you're taking care of yourselves because we're in a long-term, uh, highly stressful situation and across the Commonwealth mental health uh, care and uh, crises are kind of on the rise. So uh, just wanna make that plug, take care of yourselves. Um, Community Services has been involved with the ICANN Accessibility Project. That's different from the ICANN um, Technology Program for Deafblind People. The ICANN Accessibility Project uh, has to do with uh, survivors of domestic violence and specifically survivors uh, who have disabilities. We've been working with them um, as they've developed uh, training modules and content related to protective orders that's been translated into ASL. And um, right now, the DHH specialists are all um, being good enough to, to uh, participate in watching training modules. And we're gonna be having a, a training for them this month. That's one of the activities included in the grant plan. Um, I wanna thank TAP, um, Brittany and Christine for assisting and coordinating that and thank the specialists for being willing to participate in that really valuable education um, to help the specialists know how to handle a situation if someone happened to disclose violence, uh, domestic violence to them, how to assist them in knowing where to get resources and that sort of thing. So um, that's been a very valuable project that we've contributed um, technical assistance, uh, editing of film, captioning, um, and uh, feedback on module content and setup. So that's uh, been a project that's really worthwhile and I think it's something to be proud of um, participating in. Um, my report, I'm gonna skip over the emergency re uh, management related things for right now and come back to that because um, that's been a significant part of my activity. Um, I just wanted to give the highlights of a couple of other things. Um, Eric mentioned the support service provider grant. Um, taking care of the money budget, budgetary side of that to be able to support our um, future grant activities. You might recall that we were given um, the go ahead, the green light. Um, we're very happy about having support from the uh, Virginia Board for People with Disabilities. Um, and we had slated to start our grant activity for support, support service provider pilot project that was supposed to start um, in January 2020. And of course, because of COVID, uh, we asked for an extension uh, because with this type of training, we are not willing to compromise and try and do it as a virtual setting because the deaf blind community and SSPs um, need and deserve to be able to have uh, full fledged training and that would involve face to face interaction. And right now that is not safe. So we had hoped that we could start in January 2021. And we saw very clearly in the fall that that was not going to be possible because of COVID um, continuing. So the board was kind enough to give us a postponement of the start of our grant. So they basically held that money and earmarked it for our project, but we have not started any grant activities yet. And we hope to start in January of 2022. So um, we fully intend to, to follow through with that. Um, we'll monitor the situation into the fall to see whether or not that new uh, start date Thank positive thoughts for us. We're hoping that uh, we'll go ahead with that time, uh, that timeline. Um, I've continued to, to contribute to uh, various boards, work groups, task forces, um, most of which I was already involved with pre-COVID, everything from um, EHDI to No Wrong Door um, to the governor's um, sub-panel on Secure and Resilient Commonwealth. Um, there have been, a, all of those meetings have pivoted to virtual uh, environment. And so um, a lot of them have resumed their meeting schedules after having taken a uh, hiatus due to COVID. Um, and so those meeting schedules have started to, to resume um, their, their normal frequency, which is usually quarterly. Um, community services uh, uh, has supported a couple of interdepartmental projects. In uh, November, we were able to collaborate with the board, uh, uh, the Department of Elections to create an ASL version of their voter pocket guide 
Um, and so we're really happy that we were able to complete that collaboration in time to be helpful with the election cycle and the voter registration cycle. We're hoping that in the future we can continue to build on that partnership um, to provide translations of some of their content to make their, uh, their content more accessible to those who use ASL. Uh, we also revised our COVID communication card, um, which originally was uh, something that we adapted from a, a, a um, pattern, a template from Massachusetts. And uh, we created a black and white version of that because we had feedback from the community that um, the color version, which was blue, um, predominantly blue and white with um, red, yellow, uh, interspersed, that was not quite as friendly to our deafblind consumers. And so we created a black and white version and uh, sent over hard copies of that black and white version to DBVI so that their specialists would be able to distribute those in the field. And we posted a copy of that on our COVID resources page. Um, the COVID resources page continues to be our main place that we can provide um, information and education opportunities about COVID and we spent a lot of time in the, uh, especially the first six to eight months of the pandemic, building out those resources and making sure that page was as up to date as we could get it with as many opportunities for ASL content as we could find. Um, and so that continues to be the case. Um, recently we added um, something that's not on this report because it was January activity, but um, we recently reached out to, to the Virginia Department of Health because we realized that there was no vaccination information available in ASL, either from the CDC or on the state level. And um, I reached out to them and said, for the sake of time, we would like to collaborate with you to translate uh, basic vaccination information into ASL because there is nothing available. So we were able to do that. Um, we actually released a preliminary version, then some of the vaccination information changed. Um, and that's a rapidly evolving situation. So we will continue to update that as we need to. Um, but that's a great collaboration that, again, I hope to continue um, well past COVID um, to be able to create interdepartmental partnerships with other agencies um, to be able to assist them in making their content more accessible. Um, we continue to provide information to anybody who reaches out about Virginia Relay, remote call captioning, um, face mask availability, clear face mask availability, um, reasonable modifications to policy, um, you know, to make sure that accommodations um, can be accounted for. Um, and so all of that continues to be on a, a daily basis, uh, both state agencies and um, private citizens reaching out for information. Um, so I'll circle back real quick um, on the emergency management side, because that's been a huge part of um, my daily work since March 12th when the emergency declaration happened. Um, and that continues to be something I'm devoting, devoting a lot of time and energy to. Um, the partnerships and networking that I've established as uh, through my role as the access and functional needs officer for the Virginia Emergency Support Team um, have been invaluable. Um, at one point, someone jokingly commented when I first started um, with VDDHH that uh, a, a consumer at a town hall said, VDDHH is the best kept secret in the state of Virginia. And um, during COVID, because of the networking that I've been able to do um, through this role through emergency management, that has touched many, many agencies outside of emergency management, everything from the governor's office to um, VDH to the Virginia um, Employment Commission. It runs, I've lost count of the number of departments that we've been able to provide access, access information to about improving their accessibility. Um, and so uh, that's been hugely rewarding as a professional to be able to finally have uh, a channel to be able to share out information that honestly has been there all along, 30 years of the ADA, um, and we're still actively educating um, fellow professionals to be able to improve accessibility. So um, I've been involved with a lot of vaccination related things lately, 
the Vaccination Advisory Committee, um, its subgroup with uh, communications, and um, recently with BDH's preparation for training their people to work at large vaccination sites. And that's been everything from making sure that meetings can be captioned to making sure that the training content includes um, accessibility and interaction um, uh, training for people at a site, making sure that the registration tables have a communication kit with basic communication um, information so that when a person who has a disability um, or who does not speak uh, English as a first language arrives for vaccination, that they can have adequate communication. So it's been very far reaching and really rewarding. Um, I'll end on a positive note. Um, it's not really for me, it's more just a win for accessibility. Um, I was really humbled to be included in a group that was recognized um, for the governor's honor awards this year um, with the health equity leadership task force through the unified command. Um, and I was the only person included in that group that had to do with accessibility. Um, and so that's a, a huge win to uh, raise the profile of accessibility as a topic that's extremely important because we all know that during uh, COVID um, providing information is life-saving. So that was a, a huge honor to be included in that group and a great win for VDDHH. Um, and hopefully we're not the best kept secret anymore, so. Um, if you have any questions for me um, now or later, please feel free to reach out to me. I've, I, I can't summarize all the activities that I've had in the last um, year or even the last quarter. Um, just in the meeting, we'd be here forever. So feel free to reach out if you'd like to meet with me or email me. Um, I can give you a much more full report of, of um, all the aspects of the work that we've been doing. And I can see Susie has a question. Yes, hi. Uh, really, I wanted to say thank you for all of your efforts. It's this wonderful work that you've been doing. Um, for me, as a member of the deaf community, what I have noticed, have there been many people trying and trying to educate um, different agencies? And then we get a win. I guess my concern is how can BDDHH make sure that this continues. Typically, you know, for educations, we get the win, time progresses, and then it, there's still that breakdown. So how can we maintain this communication access? How do we keep this win? Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. You know, and, and, and keep in mind, I've been in Virginia for many years. And I see all, I don't want to see all of your efforts to just go down. Your efforts have been recognized. Uh, let's keep them maintained and going for the future. And thank you again for all of your hard work. And this is Karen. Thank you for that, Susie. Um, I appreciate um, your comment and I completely agree. One of the uh, long-term goals, my long-term goal, and I think for this department as well, is that um, you know, as we've, um, the way I phrased it is that COVID allowed us to pick up really big rocks and saw all kinds of stuff crawling out from underneath of it. That's been there all along. We all, uh, you know, in in our professions and in the community, know that these issues have been long-standing. And um, I have at every opportunity made sure to emphasize that not only should these uh, um, problems and issues been solved a long time ago and um, that you know, they were existing pre-COVID, but that um, those fixes or those issues need to be taken care of after COVID. Um, I would argue that we won't have a life after COVID. This is a new normal. This is a new way of doing business. Um, and, and so taking this as an opportunity to create um, systems change and institutional change um, benefits everyone. And so I have emphasized at every turn that this is not just for COVID and that when the state of emergency goes away accessibility 
does not go away. Um, it's, a, it's a main emphasis in emergency management to be prepared ahead of time before an emergency. And in that same mindset, accessibility needs to be a given, not an exception. So I, I agree with you and I will do my level best to com continue to be a person who um, insists that we maintain the level of accessibility that we've managed to achieve and improve on it rather than going back to um, not providing accessibility on a daily basis. It's just not acceptable to me. So <laughs> I'll fight, I promise. Okay. Thank you again, Karen, for a very detailed report and for all of the work that all of the staff has been doing. I appreciate that summary. <coughs> Before we move on to um, the board reports, <coughs> excuse me, I noticed Eric A joined us briefly. Uh, I'd like to see Eric, please come out and introduce yourself. Anything to add? Uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> to the staff information. Sorry. <coughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Eric Alviar. I am with Virginia Relay. I'm the outreach coordinator. Um, I am happy to attend. Sorry for being a little bit late. I had a meeting prior to this. Um, so a couple of updates that I do have for um, outreach in Virginia. Um, as you know, it's been a full year, almost a full year since we've actually um, stopped doing in-person outreach. So a lot of the efforts have moved into a virtual form. So I've been providing um, different various um, uh, presentations regarding our relay partner training to uh, telecommunication relay services to CapTel. Uh, information training as well. Um, those are just an example um, done through GoToWebinar, Zoom platform, also our uh, Microsoft Teams meeting. So um, that is still currently going at the same time. So we've been doing pretty well with these virtual trainings, with these virtual presentations throughout the state. So I have adjusted to um, that. We, um, for attendees that attend these virtual um, presentations, um, the amount of attendees have increased rather than in person. So that has been um, um, a difference here in the state of Virginia as far as me traveling around the entire state. Um, as Karen said before, um, you know, a lot of stuff is virtual. This is a new norm at this moment. So we are attending a lot of conferences. Some of them are live conferences. Um, some of them are not where, you know, if they, we put our information onto the conference website and anyone that is interested, they can email um, Virginia Relay directly or me directly. And then I'm able to contact um, uh, people with all the information for Virginia Relay. Um, that is pretty much my update <laughs> of what is, happening in the in the outreach uh, outreach world but uh, everything currently is at this uh, at a virtual level um, if anybody has any questions please feel free to ask me currently right now um, and uh, yeah thank you Eric <clears throat> thank you okay once again thank thank you all staff uh, next on our agenda is board reports. Uh, I have to warn you, we don't have a whole lot of time. It's 11.25 and we need to close at 11.30. So uh, please keep that in mind. And we'll try to uh, include the board elections as well. Anyway, uh, any board members would like to have a report, make their report, any volunteers? Anyone? Raise your hand if you have a, anything to report. I don't want to overlook anybody. Jason has sent in a text that he's need to he needed to attend another commitment. Uh, so he's needed to leave the board meeting. 
Okay. Uh, so let's try to take care of the elections. And if I may explain, um, based on our bylaws, Article 6 says that the board members serve for four years and then have an election. The chair, uh, well, the officers serve for two years. So I'm chairperson. Uh, for two years, I've been on since November of 2020. Uh, Dr. Lewis is assistant chair, vice chair, uh, along with me since 2020. So uh, we need to vote uh, for new or continuing the same officers. So let's take advantage of this time to go ahead uh, with our voting for um, 2020 obviously is over, but 2021 and thereafter until November when the new elections take place for the next two year term for officers. Anyway, so uh, I'd like to ask you uh, to vote for um, the chairperson and vice chairperson to continue until November, 2021. Uh, is that clear, Eric? Would you like to add anything to clarify this? Spotlight? Great, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. November 20th, 2021 or 19, we're supposed to vote for 2021, but we did not do that. Uh, we overlooked that. So. Uh, we were thinking now um, we want to get caught up, get back on track for the remainder of um, 2021. Um, this is the second year of a two-year term, and we forgot to um, vote our support for them the first year around. So we want to make this official and keep up to date with our uh, compliance with our bylaws. Tracy said, uh, my understanding is we need nominations and then a vote. We don't need a second. If anyone wants to nominate um, to continue uh, with our chair and vice chair, you can make that motion. I have a quick question. This is Dr. Lewis. So just to clarify, we are voting for chair and vice chair until November. And then are we having another election for officers for two years or no? Yes, right, <clears throat> for the following two years, right. Okay, so another election in November, right. Yes, Susie Wilbur. Um, I would like to continue with our current chair and vice chair. I would like to see them continue. Uh, put in my support for the two of you to continue, Tracy Branch and uh, Dr. Lewis. I make that motion. And Tracy saying, okay, let the record show. Roy, did you wanna Second. say something? Second. This is Roy. All righty. Uh, sorry, hold on. All my tiles are moving around my screen. <laughs> anyway, yes. Okay, so we have a nomination from Susie. And we can take a vote. All in favor of Tracy Branch as chair and Dr. Lewis remaining as vice chair until November 2021. And we'll have... Uh, new elections for the following two years. Anyone opposed? Okay, let the record show. It passed officially. I thank you for your support and I appreciate that. Okay, so now next on the agenda, uh, we're getting close to 1130. Do we have public comments? Anyone care to make public comments? Has anyone sent in any email messages to be shared with the board? Uh, Virginia monitors that, I believe. 
Uh, Eric saying, I think Paul has been watching for that at info at uh, VDDHH. Let me check with Paul. Here I am. Hi, everyone. No public comments at this time, uh, either from YouTube Live or info at vddhh.gov. Neither has public comment. Tracy said, thank you, Paul. So any new business need to uh, bring up any issues for new business or additions to the agenda for our next meeting for 2021? Any issues? Interest, uh, interesting issues you'd like to see discussed. Okay, and as always, if something should come up later when you're out in the community or someone says something to you, please feel free to contact Director Raff with anything that you'd like to have presented on the agenda for the board to discuss. Uh, we're always asking if there are issues to be discussed for the board to discuss. Okay, so before we close, adjourn. Does anyone have anything they'd like to add? Uh, I think we had a great meeting, great reports. I see people have been doing a whole lot of work even through the pandemic and all the adjustments we've had to make. I really appreciate that. Eric? Yeah, Eric saying, I wanted to mention that uh, we forgot to add something in the board report. No, I asked if people had reports to make and they said no. So I was surprised, but we typically, yeah, thank you, we typically have some. I'm sure Carrie probably has something to add to the next meeting with all she's doing. All righty, if no more comments, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? Anyone? Where is Roy? Anyone wanna make a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. Tim has made a motion to adjourn today's meeting. Roy seconds and Susie seconds. Anyway, thank you so much for, enjoy, for participating in our board meeting. Sure appreciate it and ho hope you're all well and I'll see you at the next meeting. Bye-bye.